This type of marine propeller can change the angle of its blades to slow down or reverse the ship. This is a controllable pitch propeller, also known as variable or adjustable pitch propeller. In this video, we'll explore the pitch changing mechanism, hydraulic oil distribution, ceilings to keep seawater out, how all of these components link together to make this propeller works to benefit the ship. First, what is a pitch exactly? Well, it actually is a distance a propeller would travel in one full revolution. Changing the blade angle allows the propeller to control the pitch without reversing the engine, ahead or astern. Now, let's explore how the mechanism works. This is a hub assembly. Inside, there's a piston rod assembly that moves back and forth to change the blade's angle. This is a blade with blade foot. This is a crank pin ring with a crank pin. The blade foot is secured to the crank pin ring using bolts. In between, there are seal rings with lubricant. A yoke is a part of the piston assembly. It has sliding shoes which can move linearly. The crank pin fits into a sliding shoe. When the yoke moves, it pushes each blade to turn and start changing the blade's angle. This whole piston assembly is moved by hydraulic oil. At the end of the hub are two oil chambers. One is for ahead oil and one is for astern oil, divided by a piston. Inside the piston rod are oil transfer tubes. The very center one carries ahead oil. Oil is sent to the chamber through the open end of the piston rod. The hydraulic pressure pushes the piston forward to change the pitch to moving ahead. The outer tube carries astern oil. It is sent to the other chamber through these holes on the tubes. When the pressure on this side is higher, it pushes the piston back and change the pitch to move astern. Adjusting the pressure between the ahead and astern oil chambers determines the blade's angle. In reality, hydraulic oil is brown, not green and red like in this video. So how does the hydraulic oil actually get into the rotating shaft? There are two oil inlets on the shaft, one for ahead oil and one for astern oil. However, since the shaft is constantly rotating, Oil cannot be simply pumped indirectly. That's where the oil distribution box comes in. The distribution box remains stationary while the shaft rotates. Between the inlet ports of the distribution box and the holes on the shaft, there are circular oil-filled chambers that wrap around the shaft. This design allows oil to continue flowing into the shaft even when the holes are not perfectly aligned. Hydraulic oil inside the distribution box is held back by spring-loaded shuttle valves. When the pressure on the astern oil side becomes high enough, it pushes the valve open and the oil flows into the transfer tube. The same principle applies on the ahead oil side. The oil transfer tubes inside rotate together with the shaft. However, the oil transfer tubes will move back and forth. The holes are always misaligned. Therefore, it still needs this oil field spaced in between the holes. 
for hydraulic oil to flow through and to the inside of the center tube. A head and astern oil are kept separated by layers of seal rings. We'll see a lot of seals in this type of mechanism because it is super important to prevent any leakages. At the bottom of the box is the outlet for oil draining. This part is a coupling. It joins two shafts together. At the end of the oil transfer tubes is a pitch feedback mechanism. As the oil transfer tubes slide back and forth to change the pitch, this mechanism tells the actual blade angle to the control unit. There are some alternative setups in different ships, boats, and ferries. In certain designs, the piston and oil distribution system are placed at the other end of the shaft, either inside or outside of the gearbox. Others may use spring on one side of the piston and hydraulic oil on the other side. Some smaller boats or ferries use a mechanical lever system instead of hydraulics to change the pitch. Well, there are more different ways of setup out there. Different ships, different solutions. Besides keeping oil inside, the propeller also needs to keep seawater out. Seawater could enter through the blade foot, small gaps between hub components, or through the stern tube into the engine room. To prevent this, multiple seal rings coated with lubricating oil are placed between metal parts. These seals not only prevent seawater leaking in, but also reduce friction when the blades rotate. The stern tube sealing system is more complex. It uses several layers of lip seals made from fluorine rubber, which resist both pressure and heat. Each lip seal contains a garter spring that keeps it tightly pressed against the shaft. The system is divided into three main sections, aft package, stern tube, forward package. Lubricating oil from three separate tanks circulates between these spaces. In the aft section, the space nearest the outermost seal contains a small amount of sea water. This balance prevents oil from leaking out and sea water from leaking in. The circulating oil also helps cool and lubricate the shaft as it rotates. Even with this careful design, stern tube leaks have occasionally occurred in shipping history, proving that nothing in engineering is ever absolutely perfect. Now that we understand its mechanism inside, let's look at how it benefits a ship. With a fixed pitch propeller, the blade angle is fixed to move astern the engine must stop completely, then restart in reverse direction. With a controllable pitch propeller, the engine keeps running in the same direction. The blades change instead, instantly switching thrust from ahead to astern. This allows for smooth speed control, less wear and tear on the main engine, and also helps save fuel. Because the engine can run at a constant, efficient RPM, the ship can vary its thrust simply by changing pitch instead of changing engine speed. For example, if the engine runs constantly at 1000 RPM, a high pitch position provides maximum speed because the distance of travel in each revolution or a pitch is longer. Changing to a lower pitch reduces the travel distance in each revolution, resulting in slowing down the speed of the ship. Returning to a higher pitch increases speed again. This keeps the engine at its constant RPM and reducing fuel consumption. When the blades are turned into this near zero thrust angle, it's called the feather position. 
This position is mostly used on multi-propeller ships when one engine is shut down while the ship is still moving. In the feather position, the blades are aligned with the water flow, creating minimal drag and allowing the vessel to glide smoothly. That's how a controllable pitch propeller works. Thank you for watching. If this video is valuable to you, subscribe to my channel. My name is Lucius and I'll see you in the next video.